The idea that we're going to have more pop-up tents, 500 million tests ascent in January, is this going to be enough to stop this surge and protect hospitals and healthcare workers? Well, at this point, I'm not sure anything can stop the surge, but having readily available free testing is key to making sure that we can keep rates as low as possible while maintaining economic activity. And no one wants to go back to a world of lockdown and unemployment. Having a wide array of tools available to keep us healthy while we're socializing or working or being out in public seems vital. Catherine, is testing a smarter way to change behaviour than, say, mandates? Um, we're trying to force people, we're trying to pay people to get vaccines. Uh, however, some people are resistant to that. Handing out free tests, I wonder whether that is a way, actually, of getting more people to alter their behaviour, to recognise the risk, rather than forcing them down one particular avenue. I think we want to incentivize lots of behaviors at the same time. Having free and readily available testing is going to be a huge help, but I think we also want to continue to incentivize vaccination. Vaccination is much better than um, prevention of transmission alone through masking, hand washing, testing. All of those are important, but they're complements to vaccination. So I'd love to see strong incentives, and they can be positive incentives on all of those behaviors. We're expecting to hear from President Biden that there's going to be no lockdown restrictions. Is that the right way to go? Do we need targeted restrictions, particularly when it comes to schools? What do you think is the best policy? If we could properly incentivize people to get vaccinated, get boosted, test regularly, and that's, you know, PCR testing when it's suggested by having a real exposure or having symptoms, but home testing before going to even small gatherings. I think if we could incentivize all of those, we wouldn't need to have lockdowns. It's really important that people use those layers of protection and the negative incentives may not be as effective as the positive incentives, by which I mean making things free or even paying people to do those things. There's been evidence that the negative incentives in terms of mandates have had some limited, limited effectiveness on people's behavior. Catherine, when you look at what is happening on the ground right now, um, what are you learning? Is what we are seeing with Omicron, which is becoming by far and away the dominant force here across Europe and increasingly in the United States, is this playing out in the same way that the previous waves have? Is, are there critical differences that we need to adapt? I'm just wondering if, if the kind of the playbook from Delta is the same playbook we should be applying to Omicron. Well, one of the things we're hearing from epidemiologists and medical experts is that the latency period, the period where you're uh, exposed but not yet infectious may be shorter for Omicron. And so that means it's all the more important to have really readily available testing because you may not have as long a window to catch people before they start infecting their neighbors, their colleagues, their classmates. So I think that will change the playbook a little and up the importance of that toolkit we've been talking about. So we're not going to get these free tests uh, until January. What's the... Well, what would have to happen for us to be able to just walk into a CVS or Duane Reed and get a free test? Like, would that ever be our reality? That's what Guy gets to do over in London. Um, is that going to be with something that we can actually implement here? There are a couple of things that need to fall into place for that to work. First of all, we need the supply of the tests, and I understand that that is gearing up as quickly as possible, but that we're still short, and the supply chain problems that we've seen throughout the economy uh, are present there, too. But then there's also the free part. We need to make sure that the funds are in place, whether it's through private insurers, whether it's through the government mailing tests, so that people don't face any financial barriers to getting those tests. Similarly, we need to make sure that tests and vaccines are available to people in ways that work around their work schedules, their school schedules. We can't expect people to take a lot of time off work to be able to uh, follow those best practices. So we need supply, we need the money in place to do it, and we need the convenience to make sure that it's readily available in people's real lives. In an ideal world, let's say that the there was no shortages, that there were tests available, I'm talking about the lateral flow tests here. How often with Omicron do you think I would need to test? You just, as you just said, the, the gap between getting it and becoming infectious 
is incredibly short right now. And I've certainly seen examples of that just anecdotally in my own life, that, that people get it very quickly, they test negative one day, they've got, they're testing positive the next day, uh, and, and you can see the impact of the spread of that person getting it to other individuals. How often with Omicron do you think we need to be testing? Is it every day? Is it every week? What do you think the duration should be? Well, I'm not a medical doctor or an epidemiologist. I'm an economist, but I understand the importance of incentives and of externalities, the way any person's behavior affects other people yeah. around them. So thinking about the times when you are at risk of transmitting the disease, that's going to vary person to person based on whether you can work at home or need to work outside the home, whether you're in conjugate settings or more on your own. Whenever you are at risk of spreading the disease to other people, that seems like a really good moment to test and making sure that there are both the economic incentives and the, the social and behavioral norms. We know that people uh, respond both to monetary incentives and to behavioral nudges. We want to get both in place.